Story recap here. Today I'm gonna explain an action, adventure, and sci-fi film called Alita Battle Angel. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. 300 years after an incident called The Fall, Dr. Ito, a cyber surgeon, finds a cyborg in a junkyard in Iron City. Despite its condition, its brain is intact and is still alive. Ito brings it home and repairs it. When the cyborg wakes up, she wonders at her new form. She gets up with wobbly legs and studies herself in the mirror with amazement. Afterward, the cyborg slowly creeps down the stairs to observe the people that brought her back. Ido checks if there are any malfunctions on her, but she just says she's hungry. While Ido helps her peel an orange, she asks whether she knows Ido and if he knows who she is. She cries upon realizing that she doesn't have her memories, but Ido assures her that she'll recall her memories eventually. Ido then takes her outside, where she's awed by a city suspended in the air, Zalem. The cyborg asks if he has a name for her, so he calls her Alida. While Ido tours Alida around Iron City, he explains how people from everywhere arrived after the fall, but nobody from there is allowed to go to Zalem. Alida notices a sports show playing on TV. TV called Motorball, but Ido tells her that it's not worth watching. When Ido leaves Alita alone after getting food, she shares her food with a stray dog. During this, she notices a wanted poster for a murderer who killed six women. A large police robot known as a Centurion arrives, but instead of stepping aside, Alita poses for battle, so Hugo pushes her to safety. However, the dog is still in the Centurion's way, so Alita runs back to protect it. Afterward, Hugo commends her skills and realizes that she's a cyborg. Ido returns and explains that Alita is new around the place. As Hugo leaves, Alita watches him even as Ido pulls her away. At night, someone attacks a woman from behind. Later, Alita wakes up and notices Ido coming home with blood on his arm. The next morning, Alita watches Ido work and notices an injury on his arm. Their cyborg patient says he's a victim of cyborg body part stealers. He also mentions the serial murderer, so Ido tells Alita to be careful. Outside, Alita comes across Shiren, who observes her with interest. Weirded out, Alita walks away. Shirin then meets with Ido and asks about Alita, noting that she's using their deceased daughter's body. Shirin concludes that Ido still can't let go of their child's memory. Shirin offers Ido to work together to create motorball champions, so she can save enough money to return to Zalem. She adds that Vector can make it happen. However, Ido refuses as he's certain that there's no way back to Zalem. Meanwhile, Alita finds Hugo playing motorball with friends, so he invites her to join. However, Alita struggles to keep up in the game and slams into a pole. When she tries by scoring, Tanji knocks Alita down and steals the ball. Determined to score a point, Alita kicks Tanji's feet, making him stumble and allowing her to steal the ball and score. Afterward, Hugo offers Alita a ride home. While they bond, Hugo points out Zapan, a bounty hunter known as a hunter warrior, whose sword catches Alita's attention. The next day, Hugo takes Alita to a secret spot, where they view Zalem. He aspires to live there and points out that since Alita was found in the scrapyard, she must have come from Zalem. That night, Alita notices is Ido going out, so she follows and sees Ido stalking a cloaked woman. He readies his weapon, so Alita jumps to stop him. However, Ido realizes it's a trap when they get cornered by Gruishka and Romo, who recognizes Ido as a hunter warrior. Ido pushes Alita aside as he fights, but is immediately outnumbered when the cloaked woman, Nisiana, reveals herself to be an enemy. Ido tells Alita to run, but instead, she leaps at Romo and punches him to death. Nisiana reveals her cyborg body and swings her blades at Alita. Meanwhile, Ido attacks Gruishka but is no match against him. Instead, Gruishka slams Ido on the wall and tells him to watch the fighting women. After rolling away from Nisiana's onslaught of attacks, Alita kicks her to the wall, bashing her head in. Gruishka then challenges her. Alita evades his fists and kicks him on the head. As she descends to land an axe kick, Alita sees a memory of herself in a battle where she's called 99. Alita's kick breaks Gruishka's arm, but he escapes. Afterward, Ido claims the bounty on Nisiana, explaining that he uses the money to offer free repairs in the clinic. Alita confronts him about her memories, so Ido confesses that Alita's body and name belong to his deceased daughter. His daughter was wheelchair bound, so Ido built her a cyborg body. However, the real Alita was murdered after one of Ido's crazed patients broke into the clinic. It was the reason why Shirin left him. Ido exacted vengeance, but he got no peace even after killing his daughter's murderer, so he registered as a hunter warrior. Ido reveals that Alita's heart is powered by an antimatter microreactor that can power Iron City for years. Since the fall, the technology has hasn't been made, so Ido concludes that Alita is over 300 years old. In Vector's place, he demands Shirin to make motorball champions for him, 
Gruishka suddenly bursts through the window and begs for a pair. Though Shirin refuses to, she reconsiders when he says Alita did it to him. The following day, Shirin notices that Gruishka is wired. Although Vector isn't interested in helping, his disposition changes when Gruishka speaks in the voice of Nova, a powerful scientist in Zalem. When Nova asks what happened to Gruishka, Vector and Shirin explain that Alita defeated him, though perturbed how she has such force. Nova deduces that Alita's knowledge of the Panzer cursed fighting techniques allowed her to do such damage. Nova orders Shirin to rebuild Gruishka so he can bring Alita to him dead. Nova then transfers to Vector's body and promises that he'll bring Shirin to Zalem if she pleases him. Meanwhile, Ido and Alita discover that Gruishka is off the bounty list, so someone must be protecting him. Immediately, Alita insists on becoming a hunter warrior to remember her past. Ido refuses to let her, so she runs away. Alita joins Hugo in a motorball match where he explains that a final champion of motorball gets to go to Zalem. During the game, a player, Kinuba, and his weapon called Grindcutters catch Shirin's attention. Suddenly, Tanji calls Hugo for an important matter, so they leave the match. When Kinuba goes outside later, two masked motorcyclists try to bring him down. Kinuba fights back, but more masked figures electrocute him before the assailant's truck arrives to pull him in. While the crew removes Kinuba's parts, Vector arrives to complement their work. Hugo removes his mask, revealing himself and his friends as the masked assailants. Vector pays the crew and tells him to deliver the parts to Shirin. Afterward, Vector finishes off Kinuba. The next day, Hugo and his friends take Alita outside the city. They explain how the war wiped out everything outside Iron City, and all the Sky Cities fell after going against the United Republic of Mars, or Erm. Only Zalem survived that war. They show her a sunken Erm warship, hoping to trigger Alita's memory. Alita immediately recognizes it and treads into the water to get inside. Slowly crawling through the damaged ship, she rises from the water and reaches the command deck. She opens another room with a huge orb inside and instinctively navigates the control board. The orb then unveils an unused cyborg body. Alita takes the body to Ido and asks him to replace her body with it, but he refuses. Alita points out that the warship responded to her, so she believes she must have been a warrior. Ido finally reveals that she is an Urm Berserker, one of the most advanced cyborg weapons ever created, hence why he won't unite her with the body. Tearfully, Alita leaves. Still determined to find herself, Alita registers as a hunter warrior. Afterward, Alita goes to a bar for bounty hunters with Hugo. Zappa notices her and warns that she'll be competing with them for kills. Alita is not swayed and instead asks the hunter warriors for help in defeating Gruishka. The others merely laugh at the notion. Zapan then smugly offers to train Alita, but she declines training with someone who spends all his money on his face. Insulted, Zapan threatens her, but she just laughs. He grabs her, but she quickly smashes his head on a table. Zapan swings his blade at Alita, so she kicks him back. Alita turns to the hunter warriors, saying she's not impressed by the so-called heroes of Iron City. She challenges everyone, and they must help her cause if she beats them. She kicks the hunter's drinks on their faces, instigating a brawl. When Alita is about to get hit, Hugo tases the enemy to help her. Ido arrives and tries to intervene. He threatens to stop repairing everyone for free, so everyone stops fighting. Suddenly, the newly repaired Gruishka arrives, and Hugo immediately notices the grind cutters on him. Nobody wants to fight Gruishka because he doesn't have a bounty on his head. When the stray dog that Alita saves starts growling at Gruishka, he commands its courage, but kills it. Though Tiri, the hunter warrior, Maktigh, who has an affinity for dogs, still refuses to fight. Using the dog's blood to mark her face for battle, Alita exclaims faces Gruishka. Right away, Gruishka attacks with his grind cutters, so Alita evades them. Gruishka makes a hole on the floor before jumping down and dares Alita to follow, so she does. Underground, Gruishka explains that their current spot is where he used to live and where he'll kill Alita. Alita jumps on Gruishka, trying to kick off his arm, but he's sturdier than before. Using his new weapon, Gruishka continuously attacks Alita, who evades. Alita lands a kick which pushes Gruishka but gets a cut on her leg. Immediately, he continues his onslaught, so Alita hides behind a pillar. Gruishka mentions that he was saved by the same person who shapes Alita's destiny, Nova. When she tries to attack him head-on, Gruishka manages to cut Alita's body into pieces. Suddenly, she sees another memory where her martial instructor, Gelda, told her that Nova was the the enemy. In the present, Alita uses her remaining arm to push herself up and pierce through Gruishka's eye. Before Gruishka can retaliate, Ido and Hugo arrive. Maktig unleashes his cyborg dogs on Gruishka as vengeance for the stray dog, forcing him to flee. Afterward, Ido carries Alita's body away. Seeing him, Shiren ridicules him for trying to replace their daughter with her. With no other choice, Ido reunites Alita with the Urm Berserker body, which shifts to Alita's subconscious image of herself. When she wakes up in her new body, she immediately thanks Ido and shows it off. Finding out that Alita can produce fire on her fingertip, Ido explains how it's generating an arc plasma but doesn't know how Alita
Alita can control it. Ido then reminds her that her body is merely a shell, and it's up to Alita on how she uses it. Alita soon walks with Hugo to show off her body's new features. After noting that she's a lot more touch sensitive, Hugo makes Alita close her eyes as he leans to kiss her. Meanwhile, Nova, still in Vector's body, commands Gruishka to destroy Alita. He notes that she is the last of the finest weapons of the Urim Technarchy. Thus, Nova wants Alita's heart. Hating how Nova takes control of his body, Vector decides to formulate his own plan. He invites Hugo for a drink and compliments his drive. Hugo assures that he's working hard to get Vector a million credits to send him to Zalem, but Vector is interested in discussing Alita. The next day, Alita visits Hugo. He confesses that after meeting her, he's reconsidering leaving for Zalem. However, Alita won't let Hugo abandon his dream, so she insists on helping Hugo collect money. Money. Alita even offers her Urm heart, adding that they can just find a cheap replacement for her. Hugo refuses, not wanting Alita to give herself away for him. Alternatively, Hugo suggests that Alita should join Motorball and become a champion. Soon, Alita gets ready for the game while Ido adds safety gears on her since he doesn't know how to fix Urm technology. Unknown to them, Vector has employed the help of Hunter Warriors to kill Alita while playing Motorball. Meanwhile, Hugo calls out to Tanji, who's currently stealing parts from a cyborg. As Tanji confronts him, Hugo admits that he wants to quit what they're doing. When Tanji speculates that it's because of Alita, Hugo slams him on the wall. The friends get into a scuffle but stop when Zapan arrives. Ostracizing Hugo for his thieving ways, Zapan mentions that Alita might forgive him if he's dead. Hugo points out that he doesn't have a bounty on his head, so Zapan kills Tanji's victim and frames it on Hugo, thus making him a target. Tanji tries to defend Hugo, but Zapan quickly slices Tanji in half. Immediately, Hugo throws fiery ammunition at Zapan and escapes. Meanwhile, Ido notices that the players aren't challenged but Hunter Warriors. Seeing Alita enter the game's field, Vector is glad that Hugo brought her right to them. Before Motorball starts, Ido warns Alita that her opponents are out to kill her. Though outmatched, she still decides that she can take them all. As the ball is launched, Alita rushes for it while her opponents immediately jump her. Alita clutches the ball and uses it to hit an opponent, successfully sending them flying back and hitting the other cyborgs. While the crowd cheers, Alita continues to hit her opponents with the ball, even beheading one. As the game progresses into a battle, Alita throws the ball onto an enemy and faces off against the others. Despite Alita's smaller stature, she flawlessly defeats a bigger opponent. Amidst the battle, Hugo calls Alita for help against Zapan, so she leaves to save him. The hunter warriors continue to pursue her out of the arena. When two hunter warriors catch her, Alita pulls an enemy to get sliced by another, then rigs the chains to crush the last opponent into a grinder. Soon, Zapan catches up to Hugo, but Alita kicks him off. However, Alita sees Hugo in a bounty sign, hinting that he's wanted for murder. Hugo confesses that he jacked cyborgs for parts, but asserts that he never killed anyone. Alita still chooses to protect Hugo and slams Zapan on the wall. When Zapan reminds her that she's violating the Hunter Warrior Code by stopping him, Alita claims the kill instead. Alita approaches Hugo, but she hesitates, so Zapan stabs him. Centurions arrive to collect the bounty, so Alita runs with Hugo's dying body. Alita hopes to bring him to Ido, but Hugo reminds her that Centurions will kill them both if she does. Hugo confesses that he tore cyborgs apart, though he assures her that he wanted to quit because he loves her. Shirin finds the two, but when Vector calls her, she tells him that they're gone. When Alita Alita goes outside, she presents Hugo's head. However, Zapan realizes that Hugo's head is attached to Alita's body, keeping him alive. Zapan tries to take Hugo, but the Centurions mistake this as him stealing another's bounty, allowing Alita to take his sword and slice his face. The next day, they attach Hugo's head to a cyborg body with Shirin's help. Ido reveals that the only way to get to Zalem is by becoming a motorball champion, so Hugo couldn't have bought his way up there, despite Vector's claims. When Alita asks how he knows, Ido confesses that he was born in Zalem, but Nova exiled his family because of their daughter's illness. Meanwhile, Vector questions why Shirin let Alita go. Shirin contends that she's a doctor and a mother, thus she quits her partnership with him. Hearing this, Vector tempts her to go to Zalem, but Shirin realizes that what she wants isn't there. As she walks away, however, something blocks her path. Finally, Alita leaves to confront Vector. When Centurions demand she surrender her weapon, she uses Zapan's blade to slice at them easily. She soon drops into Vector's office, confronting him about his lies to Hugo. Vector defends that he keeps his promise of sending people up, so he shows Shirin's dismembered body parts which he's sending Nova, as it's the only way to get to Zalem. Suddenly, Gruishka arrives and hits Alita. While in pain, Alita sees a glimpse of when she fought against Zalem. A barrier wiped out her team on the tube that connected Zalem to Iron City. When she 
almost fell, Gelda held on to her, reminding her to finish the mission and destroy Zalem. Alida's body regenerates from Gruishka's attack. Gruishka strikes her again, but Alida slices his grind cutters, then cuts his body in half. Vector then pleads for his life, but she calls for Nova instead, who talks through Vector's body again. Nova tells Alida that she has exceeded his expectations, so he won't stop her for now. Alida asserts that she doesn't need his permission to live, but Nova implies that others might. He notes that they can track Hugo down, adding that he enjoys immortality by watching others die. Pissed, she kills Vector's body. Suddenly, Ido calls Alida, telling her that Hugo is being hunted, so he's heading to Zalem. Alida soon finds him on the tubes that connect the cities and tries to stop him. Hugo argues that he'll die if he stays in Iron City since there's a bounty on him. Alida insists that this is exactly where Nova wants him to be to get to her. Hugo points out that they'll always be running if she stays with him, but Alida asserts that at least they'll be together. Just when Hugo reconsiders, Nova deploys the barrier. Hugo ends up getting sliced and tumbles down the tube. Alida reaches for him, but his cyborg body starts falling apart. Hugo thanks Alida for saving him just before he falls, while Alida could only scream in despair. Months pass, and Alida is now a contender in the Motorball Champions League. Despite a chance to go to Zalem, she's still grieving her loss. As she steps into the arena, all eyes are on her, including Nova's. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.